Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to go over quite a lot of comics, but I don't know how much I have to say about them, to be honest with you, because obviously we focus on Venom on this channel and there's just not a ton of Venom in this, at least character growth, things like that. There isn't a ton of it. Actually, I'm kind of curious why Venom is even on this team. And there's also some, it seems like continuity errors, but maybe you guys, maybe I'm misremembering things. So I might rely on you guys in the comments to kind of correct me if I get something wrong. Um, but this is actually going to be the Thunderbolts run. So I have my Kindle here. And I'm sorry the images are blurry and stuff. Uh, you know, I, it's hard to get a screen on a screen sometimes, especially with, you know, lights and everything. But um, the first two trades of this uh, were written by Daniel Way, who I liked his previous Venom stuff when he did the, um, the clone symbiote in the Arctic. And it was kind of like the movie The Thing. And I really dug that. I thought that was really cool. And I, you know, I think I was alone in that. <laughs> Actually, there's like two or three of you, I think, that like that story also. But I think most people really didn't enjoy that too much. But I did. And I also like Daniel Way's run on uh, Deadpool. Actually, that was another character that he did. He did Wolverine Origins, which was a book I kind of liked. And then uh, it spun off into a new Deadpool series, which Daniel Way wrote. So this book, this Thunderbolts run, to me... Uh, the best characters in it are probably Deadpool, Punisher, and Elektra. Even though they do something with Punisher and Elektra that I don't actually like too much, and I don't know if I agree with it. Um, but they're, to me, the best part of the book. Uh, Thunderbolt Ross is pretty good, and his stuff with the leader gets better later. But I didn't really like it too much in the Daniel Way stuff that's in the front. So he did the first two trades. Um, but then uh, Charles Soule came on and did the third and fourth trades, and then the fifth trade is by uh, two right, two other writers that we'll, we'll talk about here in a second. I can't, I think uh, Acker and Blacker uh, is their last names, Acker and Blacker. And uh, and they're like a writing partner group. So they wrote the last trade, which is pretty much just the Punisher fights the Thunderbolts and Venom's no longer on the team. So we won't even really talk about that too much. Um, but if you have thoughts about this, obviously let them be known, uh, known down below in the comment section. And if you do like this episode, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll dive into this now with Thunderbolts Volume 1. It's called No Quarter. And we'll, you know, kind of um, get into essentially what uh, the story is in this one is Thunderbolt Ross, General Ross, is like, all right, I'm going to go recruit a new team of Thunderbolts. And obviously he starts off with the Punisher. Now, I'm not a big fan of Steve Dillon's artwork. Uh, so right off the bat, I really didn't enjoy the look of this book, the first trade. Nothing against Steve Dillon. He certainly draws a hell of a lot better than I ever could for sure. Um, but just, I don't know, his style never really uh, jumped out at me. The previous Punisher stuff he did, I was like, well, if Garth Ennis wasn't writing some of this, I probably wouldn't enjoy it so much. Um, but uh, but he definitely loves drawing Punisher, and so he does some pretty fun things with Punisher and General Ross in this issue. Uh, but then it cuts back to, you know, Flash Thompson and then other members as they're being recruited. So pretty much this is just the recruiting stage where you get Somalia and we got Agent Venom there. And I will say I am confused when this story starts. Um, this book started in 2012 and it ran until 2014. And I believe the uh, Venom, Agent Venom run, ran from 2010 or 11 up to 2013. So this book would have started uh, closer to the end of uh, Rick Remender's run and the beginning of Cullen Bunn's run, which means Agent Venom doesn't really work for the government anymore. Uh, he's kind of an Avenger at this point. But yet in this, they don't really reference him uh, being an Avenger at all. And he's also meeting General Thunderbolt Ross for the first time. And that also doesn't make any sense because General Thunderbolt Ross was sent after Agent Venom during the um, Circle of Four story. Actually, issues leading up to Circle of Four. And then finally in Circle of Four, they meet each other and they end up going to, uh, you know, Vegas and battle, you know, all the demons and stuff and get hell marks put on them. So later on, uh, they do reference Valkyrie and that Flash has a relationship with Valkyrie. Um, and, uh, and then later on, they also reference the hell mark that's still on Red Hulk, but those are later on, those aren't in the Daniel Way stuff. So I'm kind of wondering if Daniel Way started writing this before, um, those issues or those scripts were turned in for the main Agent Venom book by Remender or even in Colin Bunn. Like, I, I don't know how far in advance this was done because the continuity is a little sloppy 
in my opinion. Now, again, maybe you guys know something that I'm misremembering, so feel free to let me know. But, uh, but you know, it. I don't know. I just wasn't a fan of some of the continuity issues with this book. Um, but uh, you have, you know, Thunderbolt Ross goes around, he recruits his team. So his team is, uh, you got Deadpool on there, you got Punisher, you got Venom, um, and then he also goes out and gets uh, Elektra, which actually was a scene I really dug. Uh, in this scene, uh, he goes and he's like, uh, Thunderbolt Ross, like, oh, I have a meeting with uh, this Sheik or something like that, like this prince guy. And uh, they're like, oh, well, the prince is busy. And he's like, well, no, let me miss, let me restate that. I don't have an appointment with him. I have an appointment with the young lady in the room with him. And that young lady is Electra, who kills uh, the Sheik and then comes out and kills the guards. And then she gets recruited on. Um, everybody gets recruited on way too easily, I feel, um, except Punisher. They spend the whole issue trying to figure out how to get Punisher on this team. And it kind of works for me and it kind of doesn't work for me. Um, there's also a mystery other member of the team, uh, Mercy. And we're going to get introduced to her throughout the story. Uh, but pretty much not a lot of Flash stuff. Like, uh, you know, the book, the first issue ends with Punisher and Hulk, uh, Red Hulk going on a, a killing spree, basically. And then now that the team's been put together, their sole goal, uh, which, again, I don't understand why any of these people would sign up with Thunderbolt Ross, is just to fix mistakes he's made. So he, like, gets involved with this island early on in his career that's, like, south of China and uh, and turns out now that's a major problem for everybody and they have to go deal with it. Um, and they have like gamma radiated weapons and things like that. So they go and get involved and I'm just like, yeah, but I don't wanna, like who cares? Like for like, I can understand why Red Hulk cares. These are the sins of his past. So why not just tell a Red Hulk story where he goes and tries to redeem himself and, and take down all these things that he was the cause of, you know, and kind of lead a path of redemption without these other characters. Cause I just, still struggled figuring out why they would show up like some of them are like all right i get to kill people cool or deadpool's like you'll pay me cool but still it's like i don't know it, i think it just waters down all these characters to a simple idea and then that simple idea is how they got onto the team and i'm like yeah but some of these characters are a lot more complicated than that at this point in their continuity it, it just i don't know it just didn't really work for me so pretty much flash's whole reason our goal on this team is to question Thunderbolt Ross. Even though in the first issue, he's like a brown noser and kisses butt. Um, and, he's, and he even gets called brown noser by uh, by uh, Deadpool. And he's like, uh, how's that butt sniffing going? He's like, hey, shut up. You know, We have to be on a team. We have to look the same. So that's why he changed his colors from uh, white and black to red and black. Because the team's motif is black and red. And that's what everyone wears. So Punisher has a red skull. And on his chest and all this stuff. And I'm like, whatever, I don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I was really surprised as someone who is a fan of Daniel way. I really didn't like his, his run on this book. Um, and the art, like I said, it's not terrible. I'm just not a big fan of Steve Dillon's style. Uh, but even then I'm able to look past that most times if the story is good and just, I didn't feel like the story was very good in this. Um, then they find out that you, they have to go recruit another member to the team which is the leader who no longer, you know, coincidentally is green. He is now red, I guess. Uh, so, so uh, he's got red skin because Red Hulk has been infusing him with something, trying to keep him alive after some incident that happened. I, I don't keep up with Hulk, book, Hulk books a lot, although I am reading Immortal Hulk right now. But, uh, but still, I was like, uh, I don't know. It just, I, I, I guess I get what they were going for. I just didn't like what they were going for in this. So they, they show up and they basically save this small, save this small country by killing the warlord of it, which General Ross basically put into command. Like it's basically, it's one of the situations where America stepped in, they found the, the son of a prince and they're like, hey, why don't, we're going to, you seem like a better person than your father. We're going to put you into your country and make you the new prince of your country or whatever. And then that guy gets abandoned by America because, of course, America is like, all right, we got what we wanted. We don't need anything else from this country. And so that guy decides, OK, you know what? America left me here. Now I've developed into a warlord and they never helped me like they said they would. And now I'm just going to take these weapons and I'm going to try to get back at them. And so uh, you find out that the leader's brother gets sent to that country, too, uh, named Madman. And he becomes like the muscle of this new prince guy. But it doesn't matter because in the end, they everybody dies. <laughs> All the bad guys die. Um, there's even a point where Punisher shoots the leader, which is really great. Um, but again, I'm, I'm talking about all these characters, but I'm barely mentioning Venom. And it's because Venom's sole purpose in this book 
is to just question Thunderbolt Ross. He starts off going like, yeah, you're a legend. I can't believe I'm getting to meet you. I would love to join your team. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's kind of a reason he would join a team. I'm like, but they already met each other in Vegas. So is this like before that? Or like, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't really make any sense to me. Like, I can't figure out where in the timeline some of this is. So, um, so maybe you guys can correct me. But yeah, so that's pretty much the whole first trade is them going to that country and dealing with uh, the leader's brother and then this, you know, big uh, prince guy that they end up killing at the end. So then from there, um, they have to go into a submarine because the only way to get off that island uh, that they were on was they have to get into a submarine. So they spend most of the next run in a submarine <laughs> for some of it, and then they go on land. But the art at least gets better. It's by Phil Noto. And now we have the whole team because Mercy, we find out, is this woman who was rescued by General Thunderbolt Ross, and she has this power to, who, whenever people around her that are depressed and they feel like they want to die, she goes and grants them that, and she gives them mercy. She gives them release and, you know, kills them. But as Punisher and other people say to her later, just because someone wants to die in that moment doesn't mean they really want it all the time. Sometimes it's, you know, a call for help to, so someone can help them from getting worse, to prevent them from getting to the point where they really will take their own life. And I kind of like that they touched on things like that with suicide and stuff. But again, Venom doesn't seem to really respond solely to that. The suit doesn't have any personality in this book. And it just, it, it, like I said, everything's just watered down to everyone's basic. Punisher kills people. Deadpool makes jokes. Um, Elektra is a badass woman. But then they just make her, she's the only girl on the team besides Mercy. And they just have Elektra and Punisher hook up and have sex all the time. And whereas I kind of like that relationship with Venom and Valkyrie, because I thought they developed it more and there was more emotion there, Punisher and Elektra are just screwing. But I'm like, it doesn't, I don't know, it just, even that, I'm like, yeah, I guess some characters just do that sometimes, but it just didn't work for me. Like, I just, I felt like everyone was just watered down to their basics, but not like in a, like, and then not built on top of that. Like, just, they just kept at their basics the whole time. So I, I really just didn't really care for this book too much so while that's going on Deadpool's jealous because Deadpool secretly loves Elektra now I guess and so he's kind of like the third wheel a lot of times and I'm like well it, it gave for some interesting story moments with him but at the end it still I didn't really care like it didn't really develop the character that much and uh, and no one really gets developed in this I guess Thunderbolt Ross a little bit in the final trade when he decides all right this was a dumb idea I'm just going to disband the team you know, Punisher got played to try to kill all of us. And I guess so, like, I guess this doesn't make sense. You guys, we, we completed the missions we need to complete. You guys can go about your own ways. And I'm like, I guess that's some kind of development, but I, I don't know, I guess not really. Um, so yeah, this book doesn't really blow me away. So the second trade is basically about an army of Crimson Dynamos that show up that have gamma radiated, um, you know, powering and stuff. And they go after the team. And so the team has to like take them down and, and fight them. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much the book. Like <laughs> that's what this book is, is, uh, and then, and also Daniel Way's, uh, cliffhanger endings are so terrible. They're always like, here's the next, the last page is always villain reveal, you know, like Crimson Dynamos. And then like the, the next one was like Electra's brother, you know, and stuff like that. And it just was bland. It was just, it was like, he was relying on these cliffhangers to make people go, oh my God, what's going to happen next. But I, I just found myself really bored reading this book, at least the first 12 issues. Even with Phil Noto's artwork and Venom kind of venoming out sometimes, I still didn't really care. And like I said, the only real purpose Venom serves is every time he gets an order from General Ross, he goes, well, let's let's look at it from a different angle or let's question that order or whatever. And I'm just like, okay. And that didn't really feel like it added too much to um, Flash's like, um, evolution as a character because he just kept doing it. So I'm like, all right, that's his only purpose is just to be the guy. To... So it almost was like Daniel Way was like, we got to create a team and we need like the killer and we need the, the jokester and we need the, the the hot woman and we need the, you know, the the temperamental lead, you know, group leader. We need the wild card, which is the red leader, I guess. And also Mercy's kind of a wild card. And then we need the guy who questions every order. And it just seems like he came up with those archetypes and fit them into some of these characters. And then just, that's all he wrote. So I found myself really bored with that, honestly. Um, Charles Soule, I think, did a little bit better when he stepped in. He started uh, writing the book when they started crossing over with the Infinity 
storyline, which was this big Marvel book that Rick Remender, or not Rick Remender, was a, uh, uh, Jonathan Hickman was doing and it was uh he was doing this big Avengers book where Thanos and his children of Thanos and stuff were coming to earth because this was coming out you know they wanted that that big event to happen before the Infinity War movie came out um I guess you know to get you know to get fans you know excited or something I don't know some kind of cross pollination or whatever um even though it happened years before uh, Infinity War ever came out um but it was them trying to do their big Thanos story uh, a modern one hoping that the movie would take some ideas from it I guess um, and I think they did. I think they, to be fair, I think they did. Um, but this is another one that Phil Noto did. I did, Phil Noto didn't do the entire second trade, just some issues. And I think Steve Dillon came back and did like a solo Punisher story. Um, but this Charles Soule comes in and Phil Noto draws most of this trade, I believe too. So the art's really nice, but it's, it's not great. Um, <laughs> actually this is the only emotional scene really with, uh, with Flash right here is when he's talking to Mercy and she says, you know, um, when I first met you, you kind of felt like you wanted to die, and that's what made me interested in you. But now you seem to be okay. You, uh, you, you've ch exchanged your depression, and this void, this monster filled that void for you. So she actually takes the symbiote off of him, and he begs for the suit back, and she says, see, you don't want to die, so you have no interest to me. So, uh, so that's her thing, is that she only is interested in people who want to die. And the reason she's on this team is because General Ross, uh, you know, uh, Red Hulk, has promised her a bunch of deaths. He's like, I'll introduce you to a bunch of people that will beg to be killed uh, because they're going to face me and my team and the Punisher and Elektra and Deadpool and Venom. They're going to want to die. So that's why you're here. And then eventually she loses interest in that and she turns on the team, of course. So, um, so this third book is about how they go, okay, General Ross goes, you guys have all been doing missions for me. Now we're going to do a, a thing where we all put our names in a hat and we pull out uh, our names and I'll do one mission for one of you and then we'll do another one of mine and then we'll do another mission for you. we'll draw the name from hat again and then we'll do another one of mine so of course the first person who gets their name drawn is Punisher we find out later the red leader kind of um, planned all this and manipulate all this to happen uh, so that the Punisher would get a mission so it would send them to New York so that the, the leader could try to uh, stage a coup to like escape the team but unfortunately the infinity invasion happens and that kind of throws a wrench in his plans uh, but what I did like is that we get the origin and background story of Mercy here in this trade uh, where Red Hulk basically finds her and she's pretending to be like Shiva, I think. And and uh, and he shows up and she's people are coming to her to get killed. They, they want to die and they want a quick release death. And so she's doing that. So he shows up and like, you know, buries the, the place that she's at with a thunderclap, buries it under ice. And then that's what makes her ultimately join this team because she sees in his head a vision he has of the future of a bunch of people dying. And she's like, I want to be a part of that. So he's like, okay, you're on the team. Um, so that's pretty much, you get that. <laughs> that's like the, the background. Uh, then Jeff De pa Paolo is uh, the, another, another artist that jumps onto this book. Pretty clean lines, but I really didn't really like the story. Um, I mean, this the story I liked a little bit in this one, but I didn't really like um, some of the, the layouts. The, the lines are clean, like kind of clean lines, but I just didn't really like some of the panel layouts. I found some, some of them kind of boring. Um, just kind of simple squares a lot of times um, and nothing really that, you know, move my eye panel to panel really like where I was like, you know, jumping around. So I don't know. Some, sometimes I factor that in when I see an artist or I'm like, all right, that's not bad art, but it's just like it's not like visually like pulls me in and gets me excited artwork. But the story was pretty good because, like I said, they draw the Punisher's name and he leads them all to New York and he wants to take down this crime family that he's never been able to take down before because how they always go underground and they have all these bases and stuff and places that he just sometimes can't get into. And plus there's like hundreds of members of the team and there's three major bosses at the top. So he wants to take them down. Um, so, you know, he's like, all right, that's my mission. We're going to go take down this crime family. And everyone's like, wow, surprising. And I'm like, yeah, that's true it's not an exciting mission you know and even though they're going to new york during an invasion with all the aliens coming down and some of the mobsters even get turned into inhumans by the terrigan mists because that's some of the weapons that are used during the infinity uh, invasion it still was boring <laughs> the best part about it actually was that deadpool kind of brokenhearted that he kind of sees a uh Electra and Punisher having sex again like he or he hears them or something so he's like you know what I I'm just gonna go walk around I'm gonna go find this pizza joint downtown and then uh and I'll meet up with you guys later so the whole book while this invasion is happening from you know the stars the whole book is like the team you have a uh, Red Hulk and Red Leader with Mercy fighting back against the aliens you have Punisher Venom 
an Electra going trying to kill these mobsters, and you have Deadpool going to get pizza. So I I, I kind of like the pizza part, to be honest with you. All the rest was kind of boring and, and simple and with no real twists or interesting uh, elements to them at all, um, except uh, Thunderbolt Ross was able to manipulate Mercy into killing a bunch of aliens at some point. And you're like, whatever, okay, fine. Uh, Venom, you know, kind of Venoming out a couple times. Sure, fun stuff. But in the end, it, it was Deadpool getting pizza that was the best part because he was like, at the end, he ate the pizza and he goes, I don't like it. He, kept, he made a joke. Everyone thinks I'm Spider-Man. So a little girl comes up and says, hey, Spider-Man, are you okay? He's like, no, not really. I, need, I don't have any cash and I want to go to this pizza place. So she, the little girl talks to her mom and then comes back with $10 for Deadpool. She's like, here you go, Spider-Man. He's like, thanks, kid. And he tucks it into his uh, buckle or one of his pouches. And then later he goes to the pizza place and pulls out after being recognized by as Spider-Man, like four or five people stop him and go, Spider-Man, oh my God, save us, you know, from the aliens. Uh, so finally he goes to the pizza place and he shows up. He's like, hey, I know I'm Spider-Man, whatever. Can I get some pizza? And they go, oh my God, it's Deadpool. And they run out. And I'm like, okay, that was a good like build up to a good joke. Uh, so then he was like, well, how much is three slices? And he goes, like, all right, it's nine seventy five after tax. So he puts the 10 in the register, pulls a quarter out and then grabs three slices of pizza and eats it. And then he's like, wait, why did I come here again? Because the pizza's not that good. He's like, granted, there's not a bad slice of pizza in New York, but why did I come here? Like, why this pizza joint? And he looks up and he sees the names of the, the three head of the mob that Punisher's after. And Punisher and them failed to get those three members because the three mob bosses got away during the invasion of the aliens. So Punisher was able to once again kill the entire gang, but not kill the three main mobsters that have been in charge of the gang for like three generations or two generations or something. Um, so Punisher's like, dang it, we failed. Like Venom and Elektra and I failed. So they go and meet uh, Deadpool. He's like, hey, I'm at this pizza joint. Come meet me. And they show up and Deadpool standing over the bodies of the three mobsters because they own the pizza joint. <laughs> and that's where they slinked away to after the invasion. And so uh, they walked in and Punish uh, Deadpool sees their names on the wall and goes, oh, that's right. These are the guys that Frank once killed. And then he turns and the three guys walk into the, the pizza joint. They're like, all right, we're going to lay low here. And then they see Deadpool and he goes, huh. And then he shoots them all. I thought that was the best part of the book, honestly. <laughs> and that was it. That that's, was my favorite takeaway, and it's not even Venom-related, which is a real shame. Um, so, yeah, so the rest of the book is just invasion stuff, and they take down Supergiant. Uh, Mercy beats up Supergiant, which is one of uh, Thanos' children. And, um, and that's it. That's all that happens in this book, and it's kind of boring. So it's not until... Uh, actually, before we get to the fourth volume, we'll jump to the fifth volume, because there's actually no Venom on the team in this entire book except for in the back uh, there's an annual that uh, Venom actually appears in where the team is put together and they draw a name from someone's hat I guess again and they decide that they're going to go after um, was it uh, I think it's oh yeah here we go it's Doctor Strange so Thunderbolts annual one it's all of them versus Doctor Strange and I was like oh this could be really good this is also by um, Ben Acker and Ben Blacker and Matteo Lolly does the art on it this is the only story in the third, in the fifth volume that has Venom in it. Venom is no longer part of the team after volume four. So we'll get to volume four next. And like I said, volume five is just the Punisher being tricked by the leader to turn on the Thunderbolts and try to kill all of them. But he doesn't really kill them all. He just beats them all. Uh, but he ends up not killing all of them um, or any of them, really. Uh, but in this one, we find Doctor Strange naked in his underwear uh, causing all these problems. And they realize that it's not actually Doctor Strange. Um, it's uh, it's like some kind of alien this, uh, demon thing mimicking him. It captured Doctor Strange, and it's kind of using his powers to like uh, attack New York. So that's what the Thunderbolts go in and try to take him down. But that's it. Um, I think the Monsters of Evil show up at one point, so we've seen them before in the Colin Bun run. Um, but that's it. That's all. That's all that happens in this. There's one cool thing with uh, Venom, where uh, Punisher goes, "Hey, let's go to Jotunheim and let's uh, let's kill some uh, you know f frost giants." And they're like, okay, so he shows up, they kill some frost giants, and they're like, why are we doing this, Frank? Like, what, Like, we got to go stop Doctor Strange, and the team is going after him, but he summoned the monsters of evil, like, you know, they're going to need our help. And he said, but we can't help them without some equipment. So that's when they, you know, uh, Frank is like just kind of baiting uh, Venom along. They go take down some frost giants, and that's when, uh, after the frost giants are defeated, that's when Valkyrie shows up, and she's like, She's like, Flash? And so, okay, finally, they acknowledge that Flash is a member of the Avengers around this time. So uh, so Valkyrie shows up, and her and Flash hook up. And that was part of Punisher's plan. He wanted them to hook up 
so that way he could steal her sword. And then he gets flashed. He says, all right, now that you're done having sex, we need to go back to Earth. And then they use that sword to go to another realm, and then they bounce around until they eventually get enough armor for the entire team so the entire team can dress up and uh, in cosplay and take down uh, this fake Doctor Strange. So you have uh, Deadpool, who has the Count uh, Pocus's magical mystery top hat, of, uh, top hat of wonder. You have Elektra with the elf skin cloak of whispers. Um, you also have Punisher with Anton Danger's Lazarus jacket. Red Hulk has Orthan's Vaz sacred relic of Kabor. Uh, then you also have the leader, who has split lips improvement of Stark's Uru armor uh, over here. And then Venom is given Milforn's Dragon Helm. So yeah, so this is kind of like a precursor in a way to War of the Realms because this is kind of what happens in War of the Realms. A bunch of heroes get uh, imbued with powers that are from uh, Thor's realm and, and all the nine realms, I guess. So um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's the, the most exciting thing that happens in this book that involves Venom. Although at one point, uh, Valkyrie does show up and kind of uh, tell Flash like she's not happy that he took her sword. And he's like, we'll talk later, you know. And so it's still referencing that continuity at least that there's a connection between the two of them which i liked uh but then in the end uh you find out that uh you know it's punisher versus dr strange and punisher has a weapon on him that could go through this uh, fake dr strange's magic and he uses it to blow a hole through that creature who uh you know obviously isn't dr strange and uh and then he does it to save electra so you see that he might actually care a little bit about electra but again this is an annual that came out after the Charles Soul run and the Daniel Way run. So this is like at the end of the book when they finally add a little emotion to those two, you know, with which you're like, okay, fine, I guess, about time. Um, but then in the end, they're able to, you know, save Doctor Strange. And then the team, at least I think are, I think they're like, their memories are erased of this ever happening or something like that. And then they all think that they just went out for shawarma. So it's like a nod to the end of the Avengers movie. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's it and that's all that's venom is in in volume five and then volume four here called no mercy this is the last time we see flash on the team this actually is pretty neat because this is them recruiting ghost rider for the team uh they basically have a plan where they're going to send mercy to hell after she's wiped out all the aliens she's now turned on the team and they realize they can't control her anymore and so they think well what if we just send her to hell then she'll be out of our realm and out of our lives so they come up with this plan to recruit ghost rider and Ghost Rider's like, yeah, I'm not really a spell guy. Maybe you should have got Brother Voodoo or Doctor Strange. And they're like, yeah, we tried Doctor Strange, but, you know, um, but we could, or I guess we couldn't get a hold of him. So we'd rather have you because we also want some muscle on the team to come with us. So, uh, which I'm like, well, Doctor Strange kind of, he's not muscle muscle, but he could fight in hell for sure. He brought Doctor Doom there once. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. So I guess they just wanted Ghost Rider on the team. So of course, Ghost Rider's flame turns from yellow to red so that he could now be a member of the red and black squad <laughs> that they are. And uh, and they all go to hell. They actually perform the ritual incorrectly and it sends them all to hell. Uh, except for, I think, um, a couple members stay on Earth. Punisher and Elektra are still on Earth and they actually go and fight and try to fight um, uh, Mercy because she's still on Earth and they're trying to buy the team time till they get back. And the rest of the team, along with the leader, gets sent down to hell. And it's actually pretty cool. This is some of the best leader stuff, I think, in the whole book. Because he actually um, debates with Mephisto. And they work out a contract together so that they can make a deal with the devil uh, to get Mercy into hell. Which is pretty cool. But then Deadpool wants also uh, to be a part of that deal. And it turns out he had a feather hat that was in the previous trade paperback that got uh, brought to the bottom of the ocean. And he dove down to get it. and had a feather in it. And he's like, where am I ever going to find a feather like that again? So he makes a deal with Mephisto to get a feather from an angel. So at the end of the book, he ends up going and getting the angel wing and coming back. And he uses that to, one, save Punisher's life, but two, to put it back in his hat, which was pretty good. Because I was like, oh, that's another good setup to a joke that paid off like, you know, seven episodes or issues later, which I was like, that's yeah, pretty good. So the Charles Soule stuff, I end up really liking. And I'm not a big fan of that guy's writing because I really didn't like any of his Wolverine stuff that he did. Um, but this, I, I kind of was like, oh, this is kind of fun. Um, and the art's good, too. Um, the art in these issues is really great. Uh, this is probably the best-looking trade for me and the styles that I like out of all of them because uh, you have Carlo Barbary who does the art in this. Um, and Carlo's style, I think, is fantastic. It's very, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like South American and Asian-influenced, and I kind of like that a lot. Um, but uh, but he has a really good style and, and so uh, so yeah so the book looks great 
the whole thing of them going to hell is fun. It's Johnny Blaze as Ghost Rider, which I thought Alejandro was Ghost Rider around this time, or maybe it was after this. I can't remember. But uh, Johnny Blaze is like, you know, talks about going to being a, in the movies now and that he um, he was working on movies until the Ghost Rider sensed that one of his producers was like a murderer and like a, a really bad guy. So he like killed the, the producer. And I'm like, where's that story? Like, I think that might actually be in a, a Ghost Rider comic. I got to go dig that up. Um, but I was like, yeah, that that was more interesting than most of the stuff they did in this trade, actually. Um but, uh, but them going to hell, I thought, was the highlight of the book. Like, all the stuff leading up to it was kind of boring and whatever filler. But once they got to hell, it was pretty cool. Uh, you find out the Penance Stare, once again, does not work on Venom. I thought that was really cool because uh, the team, obviously, while they're in hell, get into it with each other. They find a, a guy who was afraid of hair. So he gets put into a personal hell where, where he's like, hair keeps growing out of him. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you get the hell mark again from uh, Red Hulk. So that actually plays a part of the story because now only Red Hulk and Ghost Rider can challenge the King of Hell. So they find out Mephisto's not actually on the throne of Hell right now. It's actually Strong Guy, uh, Guido, from the X Factor comic books, um, which is pretty cool because Guido's a great character. And at this point, he had lost his soul and went to Hell, and he had temporarily taken over the throne of Hell because he could physically be a match for Mephisto. Um and is, is kind of dumb, so Mephisto couldn't, like, outsmart him, really. <laughs> so I kind of like that. That was kind of a fun thing they did in the Marvel Comics universe, and that plays into this. So they have to now go beat up Guido and dethrone him and put Mephisto back on the throne, and only if they do that will Mephisto grant their wish and give Deadpool the feather and bring Mercy to hell. Um, so, and while they're down there working on all that and working out their contract with the leader who goes through and actually looks through the contract, and, and Mephisto goes... I think I like you and Red Leader's, uh, he's called Red Leader now, and Red Leader's like, yeah, but you might not after this deal. <laughs> so I thought that the banter between the two of them was like really, really well done. And I, I found that to be one of the best parts of the book. Um, but like I said, when they do get into fights with each other, there's a point where Ghost Rider tries to do the penance stare on, um, on Venom and it just doesn't work. Uh, Venom is like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a symbiote, and it, it much like in the '90s when uh, Ghost Rider tried it, uh, it was Dan Ketch Ghost Rider tried it on Eddie Brock uh, Venom, um, and that didn't work either. The one thing is, is that Flash keeps calling, uh, or um, Johnny, Bla uh, jo yeah, Johnny Blaze, uh, Johnny Blaze, yeah, Johnny Blaze, because Johnny Storm is Fantastic Four. I, I had a brain fart there, um, but Johnny Blaze refers to Venom as Flash, and I'm like, does he know that he's Flash Thompson, or like maybe they got debriefed? earlier in the book and I just forgot about it um but yeah he keeps calling him Flash and I'm like everyone keeps calling him Flash no one really calls him Venom other than like Punisher I think a couple times but they don't play off that Punisher Venom rivalry that some other writers have done in the past which I I missed I was kind of hoping that would be in here um but then you know Punisher kind of has a rivalry with Deadpool in this because he's you know sleeping with Elektra and Deadpool doesn't like that and I'm like yeah that's not that interesting I would have rather had Punisher and Venom constantly being at odds but, uh, but having Ghost Rider here and being at odds with Venom was kind of fun, too. So, uh, uh, you know, obviously the book ends with them defeating Guido, putting Mephisto back on the throne. Mercy gets brought to hell, and the team gets sent back to Earth. And that's pretty much um, but how the book ends. But when they go back to Earth, they find out that Mercy actually beat the crap out of Punisher. So that's when, um, you know, he gets, uh, Deadpool gets the, the feather and tickles Punisher, and it, it like, heals him somehow. So, uh, so yeah, so he kind of heals him with, by tickling him with the feather. He's like, tickle, tickle, tickle. Um, and that's it. And that's pretty much, the, that's the book. Um, and there's, like I said, the, the one Venom issue in here that ends the book where Venom leaves the team is when he decides, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, I lose control with this suit sometimes, which he hasn't really done much in this book. So I don't know where they're getting that from, probably the other books, but it's weird that it didn't happen too much in this book and he's referencing it in this book. So he says, look, I want you all... I have a mission. It's my turn. I drew my name in the hat. It's my turn. I want you all to kill the symbiote and get it off me, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, it really doesn't make any sense in the story and the continuity. When these issues came out along with the Cullen Bunn stuff, it doesn't make any sense. It just, this book just feels like it's completely free of continuity, yet it still tries to reference things like, hey, the Hellmark and hey, you know, the Valkyrie relationship. I'm like, but then you would know to reference other things. So it's one of those like the Resident Evil live action movies where it's frustrating, where it's like it wants you to remember and forget at the same time. So yeah, so Flash just says, hey, I want you guys to all to hunt me down and beat me and remove the symbiote from me. And that's when the the you know the penance stare is done on him and it doesn't work. 
and then everyone fights him and beats him. Uh, in the end, I think uh, at the end he kind of gets outsmarted and beat, but um, but he but stays with the suit. And they're like, "All right, well we can't um, separate you from the suit. Uh, clearly, you don't want to be separated." And he says, "No, I just wanted to, I guess, see the limits of the suit, and it looks like it it stood up to you guys pretty well." So I'm just going to keep it for now and I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it, but I can't be on this team anymore. So I'm going to leave. And they're like, okay, well, we're not forcing you to stay here. So if you want to go, you can go. And he says, but you know, the suit was t actually talking through this whole issue and it was saying negative things about the team. It's like, do you want to know what Flash really thinks about you, Punisher? Do you want to know what Flash really thinks about you, Electra, or you, Thunderbolt Ross? And it says all these terrible things. So at the end, Thunderbolt Ross says, does your suit actually think that about me? Or do you actually think that about me? Because your suit said it, you do. And he says, I do, but I also believe people can change. So I'm going to leave this team because, uh, you know, I need to go change myself and be a, a better person or whatever. And he goes, I can't do these missions anymore. Um, so I don't know if this is him deciding to go to Philadelphia. Like, I don't know when this takes place. I guess that doesn't really matter too much in the long stream of things, but I like to know sometimes. Um, and, uh, and so he's just like, yeah, I'm going to leave, but I hope you do change Thunderbolt Ross. And I guess Thunderbolt Ross kind of does because in the next trade, he decides to disband the team after the Punisher gets tricked into taking them all down. So I don't know. But one thing I did like was that the suit at least had a personality in this issue, but it just didn't seem like the suit to me. Maybe it's the suit before the hell mark gets separated, but yet when they were in hell, no one referenced that Venom also had a hell mark. So it can't be that either. So uh, again, it feels like this takes place be before, after, and during all at the same time. Remember this continuity, but also forget it. And that I just really didn't like about, that's the one thing I didn't like about this trade. Although I feel like it was probably the strongest out of all the trades story-wise um, and action-wise and stuff and art-wise, I just still didn't really enjoy it too much because of that reason uh because it just it felt i was like when is this happening it doesn't make any sense so uh clearly the editors of these books just not talking to each other and the writers not being familiar with what other writers are doing at least in my opinion that, you know and if i miss something if i really am off guard here or like off base here let me know in the comments below but that's just i read this thing i read all five of these trades cover to cover to cover and took a bunch of notes and i'm like doesn't make any sense <laughs> like it just some of this just doesn't make sense um but whatever uh was it a fun read no not really i was bored through most of this volume four was the only volume i really liked and that was the volume where they brought ghost rider on the team um but venom is just the guy who questions all the missions and that's all flash thompson is in this until finally at the end when he asked the team to try to defeat him and then he leaves the team kind of boring honestly and uh and I, I really just didn't enjoy this run at all so i'm glad we kind of can fly through it all in one one long episode here because I I just I wanted to rip this off like a band-aid. Um, but the Space Knight stuff is coming up next, and some of you guys have told me you liked the main Space Knight series, but not the Guardians of the Galaxy Bendis stuff. And some of you guys even told me that Bendis is the one who created the name Clintar, which I don't remember that happening. I mean, we've been saying the word Clintar since we started this show, so maybe that's why my brain is remembering it wrong. It's thinking it's always been a part because I thought Clintar was first introduced and Planet of the Symbiotes, but I guess looking back now and flipping through the trade the other uh, yesterday, I see that it was actually just called Planet of the Symbiotes <laughs> and not uh, Clintar. So, um, so yeah, I guess we're gonna find the uh, an origin story kind of for Clintar coming up in the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. So I don't know if I'll make that one long episode where we talk about all the Space Knight stuff, or if I'll do them, um, you know, split them up and do two episodes. But we'll figure that out coming up soon. And I'll try to get them in before the end of the season. But if I can't, we'll do them early next season for sure. Um, but I got to go. I'm running out of my voice and I'm still having trouble breathing. And also Echo is chewing on a giant uh, bone behind me and it's making a lot of noise now. So I'm going to go and get some rest. But I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, sticking with these videos and being patient with me until I get them up. And I'll try to get more up to you guys when I start feeling a little bit better. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're done with this for now. And we'll have hopefully um, some some other news. Like I'm you know, hoping some more movie news will pop up at some point or, you know, another comic book I can read and, and talk to you guys about. But I'll wait and see when that happens, when it happens. So thank you all very much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.